this is the biggest question, right? So with the single agent checkpoint inhibitors, we see a response rate, and let's just round it to about 10% overall. But it's that tail end of the curve that's making the difference and showing us the difference in the hazard ratio. So now the important part is finding out who's the tail end of the curve. So, so Manish, we saw some data that was presented to suggest, you know, is there is there some patient population, and, and we have a couple that we might be thinking off the, off the top of our heads, extrapolating a little bit from lung data about pdl one positivity status, where we've seen some data from both Nevo and Pembro, so let's talk about that. And then let's also talk about MSI and maybe some of the others. Right, so that's uh, interesting that you brought that up. So the MSI high tumors um, clearly have benefit to single agent therapy and actually it's amazing that the FDA approved it across the board for all MSI high tumors. So that's that really is practice changing. In um, the third line setting for gastric, both for pembrolizumab and nivolumab, they actually didn't, um, didn't require a certain pdl one staining level, unlike the lung cancer data. And um, from uh, Dr. Fuchs' data of, uh, of the third-line Pembro study, you actually see a, perhaps a slightly higher response rate, but actually in pdl one negative patients, you had some patients who had durable responses, equally durable. So um, I think, again, speaking to the heterogeneity of the different diseases, it's not clear that um, that the PDL1 status itself will um, be important in the third line setting. I think if it, the way to think of it is that we want we don't know how to identify these patients who are going to respond. So if you are doing a clinical trial, to you know comparing. Um, a PD-1 inhibitor versus another active regimen, then you may need to enrich your population um, by some mechanism, whether it's PD-L1 staining, um, the Merck group are, are using actually now a ratio of um, the percent positive tumor cells and stromal cells over the total number of tumor cells that are uh, in the slide, uh, which is a little bit complex, but this is their the ratio that sort of they, they developed. So, so I think it's to be determined um, what what's the best way to uh, select patients. And actually, you know, sort of borrowing from Elena and others here in the group, I think that um, it may be actually a non-IHC-based test in the future. It may be something like, you know, the, the mutation load or something like that. Yes, yeah, so a tumor yeah. mutational burden, MSI right. status, et cetera, to be important in knowing for your patients with gastric cancer, and also is hopefully we'll start to get approvals in in Asia as well as the U.S. And I don't know about Nice. Um, well, <laughs> nice is a different thing. I think you have to look and in, in the end. Nice I is nice. Nice, you have to talk about cost effectiveness and what kind of. Uh, but I haven't said that. You know, yeah. Nice have approved. Uh, you know, pembrolizumab yeah. and nivolumab in certain cancers. I suppose I got a couple of points I want to perhaps highlight. Is whereas we are very excited, uh, obviously about you know, uh, the recent FDA approval about um, pembrolizumab in in MSI uh, solid tumors. Um, as we can see in the testing in the 059 of over 200 patients, only 4% were MSI positive. So in mm -hmm. metastatic gastric cancer, the proportion is small. And out of that 4% of patients, only half of them responded, mm -hmm. okay? So we talk about two, you know, if you test 100 patients and you treat them and, well, and you treat the four and then you, only two of them will respond, okay? Uh, obviously, we still, um, you know, we see the response, you know, we still need to, in the end, what survival they're getting uh, out of this. So I think we, uh, I suppose it's more a real reality check. We're excited about it. We think that is, you know, a group you want to highlight, but you, ha you also need to not, oh, perhaps not, um, you can be enthusiastic, but not uh, raise the expectations so high for the patients mm -hmm. uh, that you, you, they think, that, oh, you check it, I'm an MSI now, then I'm, I'm not going to have a, suddenly have a curative uh, uh, treatment. I don't think we can in any way say that yet. Um, one other point, actually, I want to uh, perhaps discuss and highlight is the, the side effects. Certainly, we're seeing from the, uh, the Attraction 2 uh, study that the side effects are very mild with nivolumab, and that's what we notice. But we know a lot of the immune 
um, related side effects does come a bit later, mm -hmm. okay? And if patients not on study for very long because they have been treated at third line, fourth line, you're not going to see that side effect kicking in. So I think as we move on to earlier line, um, uh, you know, PD-1, pd one you know, that immune-related side effect management will become more and more important, I think, for the oncologist. You know, certainly as GR oncologists, we're probably less familiar um, outside clinical, you know, the, 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 the uh, GI oncologists do not or have not participated in these clinical trials, probably less familiar to manage them. And I think that's an important thing that people need to need to know, that we, we do enter a new era of toxicity as well. Yeah, and especially the delayed onset. Some, some people yeah. can be off of that treatment and yeah. months later come in with autoimmune side effects yeah. from, from study.